In this video, we're going to look at the problem-solving strategy of drawing a diagram. And I'm going to do each of these examples by drawing a diagram. And your diagrams do not need to look exactly like mine. I'm just giving you an example of, um, you know, showing you two examples. And then when you solve problems uh, drawing a diagram, you can draw them any way you want. I'm just trying to give you uh, a place to start. So in the first one, we've got this virtual basketball league. It says Brad and his friends have formed a fantasy basketball league in which each team will play three different games against each of the other teams. There are seven teams, the Aggies, the Boilermakers, the Crimson Tide, the Ducks, Eagles, Falcons, and the Gators. How many games will be played in all? So the way I chose to do this one was to draw a diagram and just labeling each of the teams. So um, what's nice about this one is that the that the names are in alphabetical order and that was not by mistake. Um, so B, the Boilermakers. C would be the Crimson Tide. D would be the Ducks. E would be the Eagles. F is the Falcons. And G would be the Gators. And so I'd start off by working with um, working with Team A. And so it says each team will play three different games against each of the other teams. So I'm first going to figure out how many... Um, I'm going to work the problem out as if they were just going to play each team once. So I start off by saying I know that Team A has to play Team B, has to play Team C, D, E, F, and G. So when I start off with Team A, I know I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six games. Okay. Now, that's if they were going to play them once. Now I go to Team B. Now, Team B has already played Team A, so Team B is going to play Team C, Team D, E, F, and G. So that's one, two, three, four. That's five. That's five games. Right, five more games being played. And then we'll go to Team C. C has already played A and B, so now Team C has got play D, E, F, and G. So that would be plus four. And you can start to see what's going to happen here. Team D is only going to have um, three teams left to play because it's already played more. And um, so we can fill that in. One, two, and three. Okay. Team F, excuse me, Team E has only got two teams left to play. F and G. And then the last one here would be um, Team F has got one more team left to play. So this is how many um, pairings there would be if you were just going to each play, uh, play one game. So, so we know that there is a total of 21 pairings. And so that's if they each played um, each other once. But since they're each playing each other three times, I'm just going to take the three times the 21, and that would give me 63. So there, are, there's a total of 63 games played um, if all of these teams play each other um, three times. Now, this is just one form of a diagram. You can draw your diagram in a completely different way, um, and that's still okay. Let's look at a, um, a second way of organizing this same problem, um, the Virtual Basketball League. So another way of setting up um, a table is to start with A and just list the different pairings that A can have with other teams. And we know A can go with B, C, D, E, F, and G. Right, so I've got um, I've got six. So there are six teams that A can play. So that's a, that's going to be a total of six. And then I start with B. 
and I say root B has already played A, so it has to play C, D, E, F, and G. And so here we have a total of five games. Right? This is if we were just playing one game each. And then we start, we go on to C. C's already played A and B. C has got to play D, E, F, and G. So that's four. And then you can start to see the pattern as you, and without even, you know, once you establish a pattern, you don't have to draw the diagram for every single scenario. You can now see that when we go, when we move on to team D, um, that there are only three games left for them to, to play, or three more pairings left. Team F has two more pairings. Excuse me, E. Team E has two more pairings for F and G. And then Team F... just has one more pairing. So we get the same numbers. We get the 6 plus the 5 plus the 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 would equal your 21. And since you're playing each of them three times, we'd multiply that number by 3 and we would get 63. All right, so this is just one example um, and two ways to do it. Again, yours, um, you can be cre as creative as you like. Um, it just being exposed to some different um, strategies is helpful to get you working in yours. All right, now let's look at the, the model train problem. We've got Esther's, uh, Esther's model train is set up on a circular track. Six telephone poles are spaced evenly around the track. The engine of the train takes 10 seconds to go from the first pole to the third. How long will it take the engine to go all the way around the track? So I'm going to start by just drawing a diagram um, labeling the six telephone poles. So I know it takes um, 10 seconds to go from the first pole to the third pole. So from here to here, it's going to take 10 seconds. So assuming that the train is is moving at the same rate, then it basically it's going to take 10 seconds to go from a pole to two, past two more poles. So I know that if I travel, or the train travels from 3 to 5, that's going to be another 10 seconds. And then from 5 back to 1 is going to be another 10 seconds. So a reasonably simple problem, if you draw a picture, that if I add it up, the total it's going to take 30 seconds um, for the train to go all the way around the track. All right, so now your job is to solve, um, solve the problems that are on the next page uh, by drawing a diagram. And remember that the answer is not as important as the process behind it. So when you make an attempt to solve, in a problem, to solve a problem, I don't want you to erase your answer if you don't get anywhere with it. I want you to just start over, start a new attempt. Um, you can put a line through it if you want, but I want you to hand in all of your work um, with your final answer.